Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here today with you. We are uh, launching this new Manage Engine uh, webinar series for this 2022. So it is a real pleasure for me being here with you today. And uh, well, we have a very exciting uh, topic for today's webinar. It's going to be uh, understanding the role of AI in IT service management. So I think that there is a lot of things to, to share with you. And I trust that you are already seeing my, my slides. And I will uh, go to the next slide. So entering into this uh, topic, uh, it is really, really important for me to start with uh, this picture. I, I took this picture, I think that maybe uh, six months ago or something like that in Mexico City. And uh, it is very interesting to, to, to share that, well, the future is now. Everybody is talking about the future and the new services and what is coming. Uh, we are all hearing a lot of, uh, of uh, new trends on technologies, on hot topics like, of course, AI, but what about blockchain, metaverses, and all those kind of things. And uh, one of these... Uh, hot topics is artificial intelligence and there are plenty of uh, things uh, that has been uh, said uh, during the last uh, especially i will say five years and uh, one of the key things that we must consider is what what is the relationship with uh, with everything that we have been doing uh, around it service management and, and this new stuff autonomous cars and robotics and uh, all of those are using machine learning algorithms and, and, and are using several AI as products and services. So what does this mean for us in, in our organizations? Well, I will say that one of the main uh, issues that we are having and finding in this new AI era, uh, the last five years, it is uh, a complex path. You know, everybody is talking about AI uh the the the, the suppliers uh, the users the consumers uh the, the 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 cfos within our organizations so everybody's talking about ai but what is ai so if you get a uh, 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 deep dive into the the ai ecosystem you will you will learn that pretty much everybody is referring to ai uh, as machine learning you know uh, when we have machine learning, uh, we are uh, capable of, of uh, using ML in order to deliver uh, uh, new products and services. But there are a, a lot of, of, of things to consider and plenty of uh, data science uh, roles. We, we, we need the data scientists. We, we need the data engineering. We need uh, uh, people who is expert on dashboards. We need a lot of things to consider inside machine learning. So one of the main issues that uh, I have found across the globe is that uh, uh, a lot of people is talking about these hot topics, but no one is really addressing or no one is translating these uh, uh, topics into real products and services that we are actually de delivering on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. Or if not, maybe we are trying to, to create or we have a pipeline of new products and services that we want to launch, for example, in this 2022. So what's the relationship that we have over here in, 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 in AI and, and service management? Well, we must remember that service management is mainly based on, on, on products and services. How are you going to deliver products and services in order to to enable value on the on the on the side of uh, of our consumers, uh, and if we translate AI into products and services, this uh, this slide uh, tell us a lot of things about uh, uh, products and services that we are going to start seeing uh, across the globe in 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 related uh, on the AI stuff. Why is that? Because we are uh, of course starting to use a lot of uh, natural language processing. NLP is definitely something that a lot of people is already using. Uh, I have seen uh, people from maybe 75, 85 years old that are using NLP by speaking to their phones and, 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 and uh, 
giving some some instructions or, or or we have some personal uh, advisors like uh, Siri or Alexa uh, or any other personal assistants uh, that uh, we can see that even uh, the the little kids are starting to, to 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 use this kind of services. Computer vision. This is something that, of course, a lot of uh, uh, computers are using, especially on the industrial side. But of course, uh, this kind of computer vision is 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 uh, has been uh, uh, getting adopted by the the auto industry. So we are starting to see a lot of autonomous cars, and I was uh, quite impressed because we have been testing, uh, for example, Tesla cars on on uh, really really hard roads, for example, in, in, in Latin America. And we have seen that the computer vision algorithms are really, really good, especially in the, in, 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 in the Tesla cars that they uh, are using computer vision and not exactly LiDAR sensors. Uh, we, we are going to see a lot of products and services around the speech recognition. Of course, what we need to, 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 to do with the machines is that the machines must be able to to recognize your voice and send it uh, into digital format. And after that, they understand the digital format, then it's the text to speech. They got the, te the text and then they get back to you with maybe some advice or some instruction or something like that. Planning and scheduling, of course, uh, with all of the hyper automation that we are seeing across the globe. Uh, AI is something that is helping us a lot in order to have uh, uh, planning and scheduling, especially when we, we need to schedule uh, very, very condensed data, for example, in, in logistics and those kind of, uh, of line of businesses. Optimizations, we are seeing a lot. Robotics, we are going to use uh, some examples uh, about robotics in, in this, in this uh, uh, webinar. So uh, this is something that is growing a lot. And uh, of course, I will say that maybe 30 years ago, the, the industrial uh, line of business uh, uh, and, and the industry uh, that um, um, on manufacturing mainly, they have been using a lot of robots, but uh, right now robots are, are increasingly uh, growing and getting out from, from the industrial uh, line of business. And now we are seeing a lot of uh, robotics on the service uh, uh, area and even in uh, homes, we are starting to see robots in homes. So it's something that it's going to be really interesting. And there is a huge, a huge amount of money invested across the globe in, 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 in this industry. So it, it, it is something that we will uh, talk about this. Of course, expert systems, so just remember that uh, when uh, we talk about uh, AI, maybe well, we have been talking about AI, I think that at least 70 years, 70, 75 years. And in the last 20 years, we talked a lot about AI. And when we, and when we discussed about AI in, in, in 20 years ago, it was mainly based on expert systems. Uh, it's pretty much like the if then else that we are seeing on basic, for example, chatbots and that kind of thing. So we are seeing a lot of that. And machine learning is not something that uh, I was telling you that uh, uh, most people, uh, when, when they refer to AI, they, they are mainly referring to machine learnings, Man, machine learning and everything that uh, we can uh, do uh, in products and services uh, uh, above uh, machine learning. So why is this topic important? Well, I think that you already know this, but uh, one of the key things on this slide that we are seeing is that uh, AI has uh, is uh, has a lot of usages, uh, and it is pretty much on every single industry right now. Uh, we are seeing the, some kind of disruption by AI products and services. So it doesn't matter what you are doing right now. Maybe you you can you can um, for sure identify yourself in some of these uh, uh, areas, and you can see that. Uh, AI is here to stay, and of course, uh, there are a lot of things to consider to address, like, for example, the ethical side and what are we really doing uh, with, with uh, this kind of technology. But well, I will say that it's pretty much always the same kind of questions that, uh, that, that we have with great technology. And, you know, it's pretty much like the superhero stuff that uh, 
uh, with great uh, technology uh, becomes uh, uh, it comes with uh, great responsibility and it's pretty much the same but uh, around this uh, well I'll, there are a lot of things to consider so one of the main things we have been working maybe uh, I have seen well I have I have been in the ITSM uh, space at least uh, 25 years and I have seen of course a lot of uh, of uh, things from ITIL and ITIL help us as well to manage AI services and if you have been working on the IT service management industry the last 5, 10, 15 years like like, like myself I, I'm pretty sure that uh, you are you are asking yourself well okay we already deployed a lot of uh, processes now they are becoming practices and we are still working on practices but how can we uh, use these practices or, or use those those uh, resources and efforts that we have previously invest, invested uh, in order to enable AI services. Well, I think can, can, can help us on, on this side. Remember that uh, we are seeing from the IT service management perspective as service providers, okay? And in this case, maybe we can be a service providers of AI and robotics. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you are using AI and robotics and you are a service provider for uh, maybe you are an expert on on deploying android systems or ros that uh, this is a middleware that it has been used used a lot uh, a lot with uh, with robotics it started with the service robotics side and now uh, all of the industrial side uh, robotics industry uh, they are using uh, ROS. So it is a middleware that practically helps us to use uh, uh, a lot of devices inside the robots uh, with, with, with uh, a very single interface. So, of course, we are deploying, we are uh, building and deploying our own AI models. We are uh, working with chatbots. It could be uh, a very basic chatbot from the AI expert perspective perspective that I was telling you that if then else or if not maybe we can uh, start uh, delivering or, or or working on on virtual assistants that they are much more advanced than chatbots and of course robotic process automation a lot of organizations has been using RPA I will say the last five years it has uh, we have seen a, 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 an exponential growth on this on this on this matter so we, we, we have, uh, of course, as a service provider, we have the responsibility and we own our, our work to our consumers. And on the other side, remember that we can't work without partners. We have a lot of partners. And for example, on the robotic side, maybe we can get uh, a, robo a robot from, uh, from uh, the, 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 own, uh, the, the, the Middle East, or, or we can get a, a robot from Russia or from China. You know, we, there are several service providers right now that uh, where, where we can get uh, a, a robot. Uh, but of course, we will need a, a, as well cloud services. Uh, we're going to start using 5G. Uh, we're going to start using some uh, CPUs uh, or some chips like Intel, NVIDIA, something like that. And well, a lot of uh, autonomous uh, cars use it. LiDAR, the most of the autonomous cars. Uh, that are known uh, Tesla, they use LiDAR system. So pretty much we need a service provider uh, on a multi-layer uh, LiDAR uh, uh, devices in order to bring uh, uh, autonom uh, autonomous uh, uh, mobility into the robots. So uh, we as service provider deliver services and the consumer consume services. So this is pretty much what we have been doing with IT and doing within ITSM the last 20 years. And of course, we understand that partners deliver uh, services to us as a service providers, and we consume those services. But what is the main, uh, the main objective that we have over here? Well, the main objective that we have is that these consumptions of services will be, will be, will be, uh, will help us to generate value from our partners to us as service provider and after that the service provider will deliver value to the consumer and in this case uh, we are seeing that the product or services that we are selling are cloud services or maybe robotics products and it's pretty much the same that we have been doing with any other kinds uh, uh, or types of services previously so with the cloud uh, services 
what we are going to use, we are going to use the cloud services in order to manage resources. I'm going to explain uh, some, 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 some uh, services that we are using uh, on cloud in order to, to, to manage our robots, for example. And we have robotics. For example, you can start building your own services and uh, uh, you can start delivering, for example, something that we call robotics as a service and uh, where you can offer a robot per hour or per week or per month. That's uh, really interesting because you do not need to buy, a, 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 as a consumer, you do not need to buy a, a, a humanoid. You can rent that. So it's it's very interesting. So the, the all of this is <clears throat> we work with partners because, because we want to get their resources and those resources are going to allow us to create new products and those products are going to be uh, help us to deliver services. So it's pretty much like, uh, uh, we must translate this advanced technology into our own digital business model. This is uh, what's, what it's all about. Uh, and, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, ask me when, when, when we create the title for, hey, Maurice, what, what is going to happen with the processes and now the practices and the service value system? We need to change everything. And it's like, no, no way. You, 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 the, the, everything just complement each other. And now we must start thinking in how we are going to use advanced technology in order to enable uh, digital, new digital business models. Why is that? Because we need to start using, urgently start using this AI stuff, for example, on, on automation uh, by using AI in order to, to, to create new products uh, because we need to disrupt the market as well. If not, our competitors are going to gain, to, 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 to gain uh, advantage against us. So this is something that we must work. So how are we going to work with this? Well, we need, we, we have the partners and, and the service provider and we need to create our own offer and deliver services in order to, to do what? To consume the services and this uh, service consumption from our partners will, will allow us to have new resources. So we need to manage resources, okay? And when we refer to manage resources, remember that we have uh, four uh, categories. We have people and organizations, that it's all about human resources. Remember, digital transformation is it's not about digital. It's not about technology. Digital transformation is about transformation. We need to put uh, to put uh, a lot of, of, of effort on the transformation world and not on the digital world. So we need to bring this digital mindset by uh, addressing a lot of uh, uh, cultural issues inside the organizations with the people. The other uh, kind of resources that we always use is information and technology. All of our infrastructure and every every single piece of data that we have, it's important to understand where it, where it is because we're going to need that, especially if we are going to start building new AI products and services. On the other side, we have partners and suppliers. Of course, remember that we, we just can do everything. That's why we have cloud service provider. That's why we have robotic service providers. That's why we have RPA service providers. This is why we have a lot of partners and suppliers. And remember that we must uh, work together with this uh, kind of, uh, with this expertise that some specific partners of us has. Because if we work together uh, in, the, in the right way, then we can go out to the market uh, really fast. And on the other side, we must work, of course, on the value flows and the processes. All of the activities, everything that we have been building the last 15 years around service management, enterprise service management the last five years, and, and now with the, these value systems with, with Title IV and that kind of thing. So remember that uh, it doesn't matter what kind of AI product and services you want to enable. We must start translating these uh, into our own resources uh, in order to see what's the right configuration of these resources and how can we uh, use our uh, own capabilities in order to, to 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 go much faster than our competitors. So, on the example that I was telling you that uh, we were going to review about AI and robotics, it's like, for example, on robotic service provider. Well, I have a, a, a my partner, my partner 
delivered me LiDAR sensors. And with LiDAR sensors, I can start creating products. Of course, we are going to mix several, uh, several devices. It's the LiDAR sensor. We need a CPU inside the robot. Uh, the robot that you are seeing over there in the chest is 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 a uh, an Android tablet. So we we have sensors uh, additional to to this lidar, and we have a lot of uh, of devices, electromechanical devices. Okay. On the other side, what we need to do is, of course, okay. This is the robot, but what what what's what's my main differentiator? I can just get the robot, and once that I buy the robot, then what I am going to do with that? Well, you must translate this into your own portfolio. And this portfolio in this case, for example, is you can start deliver service services by renting the robots, for example, robotics as a service. You can ask for a specific robot for picking some specific items. So you need computer vision and you need, for example, maybe a robot who can handle with uh, two, 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 two fingers. Uh, that it's mainly call it a, an arm like uh, a cobot. So you can use cobots uh, in order to do a specific task. But on the other side, you can deliver out, uh, autonomy. If you are using LiDAR sensors, <coughs> then you can translate those, uh, those uh, LiDAR sensors. You can use them with uh, your own AI models that you are going to do. To, to, to develop in order to understand the environment on which the robot is working right now. And then you are starting to promote your own new service, new, new brand service by using high technology. Uh, and, and the consumer will only see a RAS and autonomy. That's, that's uh, everything that you are offering uh, so far. So remember that everything goes from demand to value. So you must find the demand on, 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 on your area. I have seen a lot of demand, for example, uh, in the Middle East, especially in the UAE. I have seen a lot of demand and uh, about robotics. So the service robotics industry is growing a lot. And you can actually see uh, a lot of robots uh, pretty much every, on every single building, the government building that you are that you arrive or, or, or even in public area. So this is something that you can find. You can find uh, a lot of uh, robots like this one, for example, in in, uh, in the Dubai Expo. Uh, there are several robots helping uh, a, a everyone and even security robots. So if there is demand, then you can start working with what with what we uh, uh, call uh, uh, the transformation on consumer demand into value. And of course, inside uh, most of uh, you that are familiarized with ITIL and, and, and especially ITIL4, then you will see this, the service value system inside. Okay. So the value uh, is the core of the service value system. And in this case, we are using an AI and robotics uh, products and services. So it's pretty much like I, I remember 20 years ago, we, we, we will be talking about uh, internet services, email services, printing services. So it was pretty much uh, the, 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 the kind of uh, technology that we were discussing or, or talking about in, in the service management world. Right now, we are talking about so much more. We are talking about AI. We are talking about robotics. We are talking right now on, on, on blockchain. We are talking about uh, uh, or how can I, I use, for example, Ethereum virtual machine in order to deliver crypto, new, 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 new crypto applications, decentralized applications and fintech. So it, it doesn't matter which kind of new technology you are using. You can, you can uh, uh, consider and use exactly this, 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 this service value system. And remember around that there are uh, four categories of our resources that we already discussed discuss it that these are called the four dimensions in ITIL4. And one of the things that are the key things that I always consider when we are deploying new technology, uh, it's not exactly the same way that we're going to deploy technology in the US than in Europe, that in the Middle East, that in Latin America, that in Africa. So uh, there is a, a very powerful model that I strongly encourage you to, to take a look and to think about when you are deploying new, 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 new technologies. And it's the PESTEL model. The PESTEL model says, OK, uh, additionally to these resources, these four resources, you, you need to understand 
how the politics is, is, is working around that. We have uh, seen a lot of restrictions, for example, from, from, from the US to China and vice versa. So this is something that you must consider if you are going to use, for example, uh, a lot of infrastructure from Asia, deploy it into the US, maybe you can uh, have some issues later on. So be careful on that. Uh, economics, of course, this is something that we must consider. Uh, inflation, uh, what about the struggle? Uh, the struggle we are finding right now because of the COVID and, and, and everything around uh, economics. Of course, the social stuff, it's not the same uh, way we are going to deploy a robot in, 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 in the US versus in Latin America. In Latin America, uh, the robots uh, must be, for example, much more friendly uh than in the us so in the us you deploy the, the 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 ai algorithms for for answering and they are pretty simple they are uh, pretty well executed well structured and that's it and in latin america we are deploying uh, robotic services uh, they have much more uh, decisions they have much more uh, sayings they have uh, much more ways to express because that's the only way we can find that socially they will be accepted so this is something really interesting uh, technological of course we need to consider everything around technology if we are um, uh, having access to the, uh, x y z kind of technology uh, the legal stuff of course it's something uh, always that has some uh, risks especially when we are talking about new technologies and of course the environment uh, remember that one of the key hot trends in the in the industry that we are facing right now is everything is going to green okay so uh, how are we going to handle this green stuff into our new products and services so now we can see that it's not just a matter of oh yeah i, I will just start uh, uh learning some python and we'll throw some lines and then i will put my machine to to, to learn some algorithms and and that's it that's everything i need to do and then i will start selling that that's not exactly how it works we need to consider and we need to develop a lot of strategies so uh getting back into this uh, partner deliver services the service provider get the resources create the products deliver the services and this is the only way in which we will translate uh, value from partner to the service provider and deliver value from the service provided to the consumer so it's 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 pretty much exactly the same thing that we have been doing with processes since the last 20 years as you can see so it4 will help me to manage the resources and to manage the it services and of course what we are seeing right now is just that now we are talking or we are discussing around a, a whole new technology so it's very interesting. I can I can uh, pretty much uh, deliver exactly the same the same slide, but uh, but with uh, the same uh, webinar, but with uh, for example uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And there are plenty of products and services that we can start discussing right now. So it doesn't matter which kind of technology we're using. That's something that that, that that's why I really like the 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 the. the the, 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 the strategic side on, on, on the service management and, of course, on the IT side and on the enterprise service management. So it's really interesting how we are using the four dimension and the service value system, regardless of which kind of technology we are using. So just uh, uh, remembering the service value system components, the ones that you can see below, the robot, this is a, a delivery robot that is uh, uh, with uh, UV light for disinfection. So it's a disinfection robot. So uh, we saw some demand and opportunity, for example, on these kind of health uh, issues, and we must deliver value. How are we going to deliver value? Well, we can send a robot to disinfect the same area all day long because this is going to be a very repetitive task and we need to, to keep disinfecting the, the, the workspaces all day long. So uh, remember that the service value system components are the guiding principles, really important, the governance. At the center, we have the service value chain. Uh, we have, of course, the practices. And at the bottom, we have continual improvement. So uh, uh, if we consider the service value chain, we, we can start translating the service management in, the, in, in, in several layers. So on layer uh, number one, 
we will have the vision. And of course, it's again, the service provider. In this case, is the robotic service providers. So we are going to answer two main questions. What does this provider has? Well, in this case, resources that it has robots. It can be several types of robots. We, 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 we said uh, we have mentioned delivery robots, cobots. Uh, we have mentioned humanoids. We have mentioned, well, we haven't mentioned, but for example, exoskeletons. Uh, we have a uh, uh, whole uh, line of uh, uh, big uh, for 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 big line of uh, of industrial robots. So we have plenty of kind of robots. But well, in this case, it's generalized robots. For what? Well, meet uh, meet some needs. For example, robot in a factory. So we have uh, deployed several robots in in Latin America for for. Uh, for uh, several uh, beer companies, they are showcasing how they uh, how they made the the, the, the beer, and uh, the, uh, the instead that, that that you have plenty of people showing the factory, uh, you can uh, automa automatize everything into the robot. So the humanoid is is bringing all of the people to several rooms into the beer factory in order to understand what's the, uh, the, the manufacturing process. So this is something really interesting. And the consumer in this case is, uh, of course, remember that the value is when, when you know what they are looking for, you are looking for cover they need. And uh, of course, you understand your market for what? For what they are they are consuming your products and services be happy live good be free uh, achieve uh, some business outcomes for example okay so in this case the two key words are we are delivering a service provider and the consumer is obtaining value okay so this is the co-creation of value and when we co-create the value uh, this is exactly when we are perceiving the benefits and, and remember that this is the usefulness or importance of something, okay? So in this case, this is the level one. But what will happen if we go to the layer two or level two? This will be the strategy. So how can we create the value? So this is something that uh, most of all should, should, should start thinking. Okay, I have access to very advanced technology. I can have access even to, to space technology, special technology. So how am i going to use this space technology in order to create value well we need to start thinking on the on the on the utility and benefits okay so who define what's value remember the consumer who uh, is in charge of understanding what value is for the consumer the supplier so so we need to analyze so in this case we need to improve for example performance we need to remove for example, restrict some restrictions, and in this case is the utility. So it's the purpose. We are finding the purpose of what we are going to deliver. In this case, is the effectiveness. On the other side, we can, for example, reduce something, reduce costs, reduce risks, reduce uh, friction. You know, right now everything is about frictionless. Okay, so reducing something can help us to enable the warranty. So remember that utility and warranty both are really important in order to create value. If we only have one of those, then we are not going to deliver value. So the service must be translated into that. For example, robotics as a service should be a service who offers utility and who offers warranty at the same time. If not, the value will not be perceived. So this is the way in which the supplier delivers a service and now the consumer can actually consume those services. And remember that the value will only be realized once that the consumer uh, is experiencing your service. On the layer three, that will be how to deliver and categorize uh, this value because it's, it's, it's really important to go further than, than just understanding the, 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 the utility. So remember that the service provider has resources and the resources could be personal, could be, of course, a lot of IP stuff. You know, uh, for example, AI models, a lot of organizations are building really, really strong AI and that's what they are selling. So that's a huge resource uh, right now. Several kind of tools, partners, suppliers, logistics, tasks. So those are resources. Why do we need those? Because we need to build products. The products can be engineering, can be natural language processing, for example, can be autonomy, can be computer vision, can be analytics, for example. 
can be big data. No? So we can build products per se that are going to help us to mix those with the resources. Once that I understand, okay, these kind of resources are enabling these products, then the next step is to start uh, agreeing the offering. In this case, I can offer services based on my products that are, for example, data science, applied cybernetics, service actions, specific service actions. For example, executing some commands, some voice commands, uh, going from one way to another, uh, using the autonomy in order to move one object from from, one, from point A to B, etc. So now that I have the resources and the products, those uh, there are several products that can help me to deliver different uh, services. And once that I am uh, agreeing on the offering and actually selling my offering, then I can start deliver the service. For example, I can deliver service and on top of that, I can uh, sell maintenance for robots, delivery uh, humanoids, delivery predictive analytics, for example, and it's everything building on our offering. And once that I deliver the services, of course, that's where the consumer actually understand the importance and the benefits of, of and, and the utility. So remember, once again, the consumer demand value and they demand value and they will get the value through the service consumption. The service consumption will be based on the uh, offering they choose, the service level that they choose, the products that they use, the resources that are customized by the service provider. And then we have the continual improvement. So uh, a lot of, of you have been working a lot on your service catalog, on your service portfolio, on your service level management initiatives. And it's pretty much what you are seeing right here with a practical example, in this case, the, the robotics. But it's pretty much based on, 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 on the same thing. You know, it's the, the service value chain. And the service value chain, remember that it's the uh, operating model describing the key activities that are necessary to meet the demand and facilitate the value creation, okay? Through what? Of course, through the generation and the good management. That's why best practices uh, are here because they are going to allow us to understand the best management. So remember that everything, if, if we make a zoom from the service value system, then we will see the service value chain. The service value chain still goes from demand to value with the main difference that there are several uh, uh, stages. We have engagement, planning, design and transition, obtain and build, deliver and support, improve. And we are going to deliver through products and services the value, okay? If we do not have real products and services to offer, then the value will not arrive. So the value streams, remember, that doesn't have one specific path. They can go from opportunity and demand to value following different path. it all, it, it, paths. It all, it all depends on, on what's the, 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 the stage that I am right now. For example, the first time that I, uh, that I worked on robotics, of course, maybe I, I, I got the engagement and then planification and then design and then obtain and then uh, I follow this path. But uh, right now, for example, for, uh, for mantain maintenance on, of one of my robots, I follow a completely different path. Maybe I go to engage and from engage, I go to obtain and then design and then build and then deliver and then products and services. You know, it's pretty much different, different paths and that's why the value streams are very important. Now, if we go into a, a much more deeper, deeper uh, layer or level, level four, is how to control the value and how, how can I translate these operations on a day-to-day -day basis uh, on my service management tool? Well, you have, Service provider create the, 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 the products and services based on robots. You need to design, you need assets, you, assets, you have C, CIs, so you have asset management, you have uh, 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 configuration items, for example, cards, sensors, AI models, everything should be, for example, on your CMDB. Uh, all, all of these need changes. Of course, we need change management. In this case, well, change control, add, modify, remove. We are constantly doing releases and deployment, so we need to use these modules as well uh, for in order to, to, to do what? To, to create value with, with normal service operation. So the value is delivered to the consumer and the consumer is getting those uh, services or products through the SLA. Once that I have the SLA, of course, the consumer is starting to interact with us through the service desk 
through our robots, our portals, through our cha chatbots, throughout our emailing, for example. And of course, everything is following through the service catalog. So there is another module on, 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 on our service management tool. And this service catalog will, will do what? Will do requests, will generate requests. So we need the request fulfillment module. And uh, of course, once that we are operating the robots, we are going to have events. There are several type of events, informational, for example, or disruption or degradation. And if we have disruption or degra degradation on our AI services or on our robotics products, then of course we are going to have preventive events, possible uh, disruption. Then we are going to start working with incident management for restoration. Or we are going to start working with problem management if we need, if we have recurrent or correlated uh, events in this case that are disrupting or degradating our services. If we do a uh, further analysis, maybe we will get known errors. We will start working on workarounds. We will find final solutions. And through a change, we are going to uh, remove this kind of restriction, you know? So uh, now you can see how we translate the, this advanced technology into our service management tool. And you are going to start uh, listening and, 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 and your consumers will ask you a lot of, of AI. Just remember that AI is, is based in, 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 in data science. And the art of thinking like a data scientist is pretty much what we have been discussing during this webinar is identify the business initiative, empathize uh, with the stakeholders, understand the entities, identify the use cases, brainstorm data sources of, do you remember working with a lot of uh, human resources and our own culture? So we need to embrace this new culture. We need to start creating analytics scores, <coughs> I'm sorry, identify recommendation and map scores uh, to recommendation. So this is pretty much what we need to do in order to start uh, uh, working with this advanced technology. Okay, so right now I am going to pass, to stop uh, sharing and I am going to pass the, the, the presenter mode to my colleagues and touch who, who, who will help us to understand in reality how can we do this into the service management tool? Santosh, thank you. We can't hear you, but anytime you can start. Thank you so much, Mauricio. Uh, I hope you're all able to share me loud and clear. And uh, thank you so much for a great session, Mauricio, on explaining us how we could uh, build robotics along in tangent with a service management solution and how we could put uh, all those activities together for a better day-to-day -day usage. So I'm Santosh Maiban. I'm from the product, man uh, product management team. Uh, I'm here today from the services team to talk about how we can make AI great and make great things happen with your service test plus. So we've all been talking about AI. We've all been discussing about how we could build, construct, utilize AI and make it work with our day-to-day -day effect. And we kind of feel that this is something that is uh, in effect uh, from like past five years or so. But just to take us back in time, in 1914, the aircraft engineers have designed autopilot capabilities in their airlines or in the aircrafts for takeoff and landing. So this is something that has been existing like more than 100 years ago. Back in 1914, this has been into like effect. So we have been talking about uh, the AI ever since from there on. So AI, the aircraft industries has been evolving day in, day out on how the airline industry has been evolving and utilizing the AI capabilities on an aircraft's day-to-day -day activity. So moving into our uh, AI capabilities, we are now taking our turn to Hollywood, where we are now going to see how the AI has been among us for a while. As a kid, I know about Arona in Richie Rich, where she could like turn into any type of character she needs to. She can uh, interpret 
anything. Uh, she could turn into a vacuum cleaner, a washing machine. She could turn herself into a weapon. So that is how that character I've seen all along been evolving around us. And this knowledge about AI was there even before like 20 to 25 years ago. Today, we have also seen Iron Man as Jarvis, Ava in X-Mania. And like we've seen all of these characters develop and exhibit different characteristics. But again, we've been living around with these uh, characters from a long time, explaining how the AI has been evolving, how it's been working along with human and uh, how it reciprocates to what we say interprets, predicts, and also like evaluate what it could do in the future and it's been helping us. So if we are taking, uh, the, if we wanted to take a statement about what exactly AI is from Gartner, so here is what Gartner says, artificial intelligence is technology that appears to emulate human performance, typically by learning, coming to its own conclusions, appearing to understand complex content, engaging in natural dialogues with people, enhancing human cognitive performance, also known as cognitive computing, or replacing people on execution of non-routine tasks. So this is exactly about where the AI is evolving and it has to take us further. So but what we're going to do now is that we're going to uh, break AI into uh, two different aspects. So AI could be classified into artificial narrow intelligence or artificial new uh, artificial general intelligence so artificial narrow intelligence is what we have in existence right now all right it works uh, it's when a system is trying to do one particular job with the highest accuracy and efficiency possible and these are like the routine jobs that we do day in day out so this is something uh, uh, that artificial narrow intelligence is good at and this is how the ai is categorized into one segment and this is what we have into existence today now the other categorization is about the artificial general intelligence which exactly is what jarvis does he talks to tony stark who's wearing the iron man suit he predicts he gives analysis so whatever action the user is trying to do the ai is telling the user what's good what's bad what's going to be the outcome and again if there is any cross operation that's happening, the AI interprets. So this is something that is good to have in like a couple of years or even that is in existence right now would be available for all the user community very soon. So this is something about how artificial general intelligence works. And this is how the AI has been categorized today. Now, we said that the AI is not something new. It's something that's available for all of us for a very long time. So we have been having iPhone for a while. And again, you have Siri, Tesla, who has like those self-driving cars. So AI is quite into existence. And there are like so many applications that we have that uses artificial intelligence. Now you take a picture in Instagram trying to upload it and it gives you the location, it tags and fetches the data. And also Facebook gives you suggestions based on the uh, uh, picture that you're loading. So it uses machine learning and it brings in data saying that, okay, these are all your friends or they look like a couple of people that you have in your friends list. Do you want to tag them? So this is exactly how uh, the AI has been evolved in our day-to-day -day, uh, activities that we do. So these are like uh, operations that we do now and then. And taking back to my introduction AI uh, statement that I gave about the airline industry. So what? Uh, so there's an article in New York Times that New York Times that basically says that there is about like seven to eight minutes of the pilot's actual manual process that they do during the landing and takeoff, and most of these operations are controlled by artificial intelligence through the autopilot program. And what they are planning to do, the airline industry is planning to do, is that to reduce the human population in the cockpit. So they just want this to be more and more automated through robotics, work with the air traffic control, and make all the and make the entire process seamless. So this is something that the AI industry has been working. Uh, uh, AI has been discussed and thought about in the 
uh, air traffic, uh, air, air, airline industry. But bottom line is that trying to replace uh, a human population in the cockpit is quite a challenge. But again, this is something, again, the AI trend is being evolving around us. Now, we can keep talking about all these different AIs that we have about the Uber, how they predict its ETA, when you hail a cab, how it's going to tell us like what's the challenge that's there in between. Then again, uh, about Snapchat, how it uses uh, AI animation to show different faces and images and pulses when you're looking into a lens. So there is like a lot of these AI that we use today, and that's already like in place. So we're using it day in, day out. So now we need to know how it is achieved, right? We need to know uh, how the AI is achieved. So we have different segments such as like natural language processing, machine learning, automated reasoning, computer vision, robotics. So we have all these segments. And in today's case, we use the machine learning segment, which has two different segments. One is artificial neural networks and deep learning. So these are the like the two major elements that we are using in today's case with regards to the AI and how it is being built across. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little deeper dive into uh, the service management concepts and understand how AI can make great things happen in your service test plus. Now, there are two things to this. Now, one is like things that humans would not rather do and doing things that humans that are bad at. So they both are like, two different segments, but again, you don't want humans to do certain things because it's repetitive. And there are certain things you definitely don't, don't want a user to do because it's something you need to analyze series of data and come to a conclusion. So this is something uh, uh, that needs to be like implemented in your service management principle because you don't want the repetitive tasks to be done day in day out by a user so that is just wasting someone's time so you need to implement ai over there and make you replace the human activity from that point so that is something that uh, we would discuss in a while on how the ai in lines with the service management principle and why we shouldn't do it and for analysis predictions for getting a cognitive futuristic uh, data you can't have human do it because a human being has to go through series of data sets, reports, analytics, validate the data set and come to a conclusion. And there are chances of errors, uh, more chances of errors. So that is exactly what we need to replace uh, today with AI. And we don't want a human to do all these analysis. So this is exactly how uh, AI can make your service desk great. Now, in order for uh, continuing on the same point, how AI could uh, make our, make things better in your service management uh, principle is by like smart automations, all right? So these automations are not intelligence, but they are uh, done based on set of rules that's fed to the system. And these rules are defined by the historical data that you have already populated or the data that is already there. So the AI is getting trained based on the results and yields you the data. So for instance, in your help desk system, if you're getting tickets coming in and you wanted to prioritize the ticket, categorize your ticket, assign the ticket to someone, uh, some technician, share a documentation proactively. Well, this is all possible, but again, you need to feed the right set of data into your system. So the AI would learn based on what has been fed in and perform smart automations. So the strategic, uh, strategic insights is about like how your help desk would process huge volume of data and it comes up with a plan. It comes up with a strategy on how it could be executed. Now, this comes into uh, effect when you, have, uh, when you have the challenge of finding the right window to publish a change or to roll out a patch, all right? So this is something that is only possible with the sequence of existing data sets that is being programmed and processed by your artificial intelligence because it needs to understand the time, the date, the type of activity, the duration of this particular process, and then figure out what would be the next set of exact timeline to which it could process and perform this activity. So this is about AI giving us the strategic insights. And the next is about the predictive analysis. 
All right. So as we said before, doing based on what has already been fed is good and learning about a set of data and trying to come up with some strategic insights is all like uh, AI activities, which is again something what the human has been doing so long, which we are trying to replace. Now, when it comes to the predictive analysis, if the system can learn from the set of data and outcome and predict the outcome or suggest the results. So that is going to be your predictive analysis. Now, this needs uh, data from different standpoints, like your analytics, where you have series of data sets based on the incoming tickets. How can the technician work effectively without compromising your, the SLAs? So that is predictive analysis. Or what would be the level of load that a technician could handle in the help the system if you're going to reduce your technicians and move them across different streams? That would be a prediction analysis would be with regards to your service management activities. So flagging requests that could violate SLA or identifying potential IT problems and changes in the future based on the series of tickets that's coming in. So these are all predictive analysis that would need to be there in your service management solution. So AI in IT service desks. So we are gonna see how these AI operation in your IT service desk works today. Now, where does it all start? So you have your service to system, which has like a whole bunch of data. It's gonna have uh, like tickets, calendars, announcements. It's gonna have your asset data, your CI, different timestamps. Now what the artificial then does is that it gets trained on the data that is already there. So you cannot have junk data on your service desk or on your help desk solution because AI is going to train itself with data that you already have. So that has to be in place. Now, once the AI gets itself trained, then it works with the live data as and when it comes, and it's going to use all the previous uh, uh, strategies that we have discussed into effect. The smart automations or the strategic insights or the predictive uh, uh, analysis. So that would all be done by AI when it's working with the live trained data, and it's going to implement and yield us results. Now, what we are going to discuss over here is about a couple of scenarios. So how Service Desk Assistance Chatbot helps in day-to-day -day activity. Now, this chatbot over here it talks with the end user when someone says there is a challenge with printing. Now, when they say so, the AI is going to give them output or the AI is going to tell them like what they should do. And when that does not work, then the AI would suggest the user to go ahead and create a ticket. So this is currently available with the service to solution. This is powered by machine learning and NLP. This is something you could arrive or use even today. The next scenario is about the same printer challenge, though the user is talking with the AI saying that um, I'm not able to print and uh, I'm having challenges printing. The troubleshooting is all done, but then the AI comes back saying that okay, you know what, the printer in your floor is not working, but there are like good printers at the other floors where it's worked out good. So go ahead and use them. So this is something about the AI giving more predictive analysis on and uh, like insights on what they should do. So this is about chatbots and AI. The next is about IT service request operations when it comes to the classic user onboarding uh, process. Now over here, with regards to user onboarding or the employee onboarding, AI should be learning from the data sets that's already there and recommend suggestions like, okay, you're hiring someone for a finance head. So that person should have MacBook with certain set of software. So this is something AI could recommend. So this is achievable today through template suggestions that we have in Service Test Plus and category predictions. Now, the same scenario has to extend where we should also have processes where not only you predict the software and the hardware for the user, but also the accesses and the applications that it is required. So if you're hiring someone as a board of director or a marketing lead, the AI should not only give the hardware and the software, but also should recommend the solutions, the uh, tool sets that is required for that particular user. So this is about the AI's operation in your service management. 
Likewise, about the change management processes. So we have a lot of challenges today in controlling change activities in tandem with the service operations because the service operations can be easily prioritized or it could easily be fed with series of data towards the AI and we can bring up at least some corrections or shift left with whatever data set that we have. But help a change work seamlessly, avoiding all the challenges and bring in minimum risk is quite a challenge. So AI today, what we have is to predict the time when the change has to be deployed. So based on the dates that we feed, AI is helping us to choose time frames so that not too many major changes collide or scheduled at one point. Analyze the leaves, the holidays that is there on the calendar and suggest that this is not the right time to pro perform a major change or a normal change, which is going to be deployed across all the user computers. So this is something AI in today helps us understand the right window where we could publish the changes. And this is powered by machine learning. The no another scenario towards the change management is about like doing a prediction analysis and changing the entire phase of the implementation. So this is about identifying problem areas and helping with the change implementation. So this is powered by machine learning. And what we are expecting is that when you get a series of tickets coming in with print regards to the printer jam and printer is not able, we are not able to connect to the printer and it's not working, collect those incidents together and create a problem ticket proactively. Trigger, figure out the root cause of what could be the problems and like just list out the suggested assets. So from your CMDB, populate the assets like, okay, too many printing issues on a printer. So here are the list of printers. Users are unable to connect to the printer. So here are the network uh, devices that is connected to the printer that could also be a challenge. So from the change and create a change analysis automatically with the tickets, the problem and the CX that you have arrived at, bring out the change and start your change implementation from there. And then suggest who needs to be part of the chain, that change analysis. So starting from the incident to executing the change, AI should understand the data, to understand the previous set of records and such as how the change has to go through, who are the key stakeholders who needs to be part of the change. So this is something that we want AI to work on ID service management operations in tandem with the change management principle. Likewise, on uh, asset management where like predict the assets that could lead to a failure or that could lead to like a lot of incidents then understand if the software distribution is through, seamless throughout, uh, get a list of like risk assets, high risk assets or software that were not updated, uh, do vendor audits, maintain the compliance. So these are areas where we want this uh, AI to work in the IT asset management spectrum. So AI for IT operations, as we've discussed, uh, we want AI to work on the automated adaptive threshold configurations, Intelli uh, intelligent recommendations for best times to perform firmware upgrades, prevent unwanted or unnecessary downtimes by controlling errors and configuration changes. Then we want AI in the security information event management where it detects insider abuse, enable intelligent detection for data uh, exfiltration, then identify root cause of repetitive account logouts, finding out why it's happening and prevent or cut short on why, uh, where it could be uh, prevented. Then AI for endpoint management to determine the best time to push out patches, provide timely notifications for the capacity planning by predicting uh, additional license requirements because you don't want to run out of license and end up with uh, penalties. Identify data leaks, thefts, or attack attempts on smart devices uh, by alerting the users and administrators. So this, these are like AI capabilities that we have today across different operation streams and that's something that we've been using now where would it all start like so where do the ai operations start in the first place all right so over here it starts with chatbots where ai is immediate impact on service desks so help desk is where you already have a data set and using chatbots prevent the user from communicating to the with the technician and introduce ai where it could learn from the set of data that you already have, 
yield answers and work with the users. Automatic categorizations of tickets, suggestion, uh, suggesting templates, and um, in, intelligent assignment or uh, uh, intelligent technician routing for all the tickets that is being created. Now, we are going to see a couple of scenarios on how Manage Engine and Zia, which is our own product that we've worked in, so corporation, work together. So here is a scenario where I want to take a remote control of a specific asset. So what I'm doing is I'm just talking to the Zia saying that take remote control of DRV SCR to a workstation. So Zia is reading my voice command. It is processing and it's tele uh, like updating the same set of instruction what I've just sent. Now with the instruction, Zia understands that the remote control has to be established. So right from the mobile app, uh, IT help this technician just using voice commands can go ahead and perform remote operations. The moment they do that, obviously, what are the other what are the tools that is available will be listed for the user. All right. So this is something about how a uh, help this technician would need to troubleshoot a technician a user's laptop or a workstation can perform this operation directly through voice commands. Likewise, I also need to talk to Zia to get a list of uh, list of critical patches. So at the moment I again say the voice command, Zia processes the statement, fetches the data and populates it. So again, we've seen how the AI works with the IT services with using chatbots. Likewise, through mobile app using voice command, Zia is working with the set of data that's already there and it is giving us the results. So this is how Manage Engine and Zia works together and with all different applications that we have in Manage Engine, interacts with Zia to fetch data for us. Now, now we don't know that all these are possible. Like AI is available. It's working with your IT operations, IT service management, then endpoint management solutions. So where does we where do we start? Where does where do we want the service teams to start? Now, the data that you have in your system should be neat, clear, and well documented. So documentation is the key. Document all your incident, problem, changes, uh, releases, any data that you have. Document them clearly with proper categorization, prioritization, because this is important. Machine learning is where everything starts. And whatever is proper in your application is what is stored in the database and Zia or any AI would read from the database and process the system. So just make sure you have all these elements documented. And with this documented information is where your AI would learn, train itself and perform answers as how we saw before. So make sure you clear and have all your data intact. And that is what is gonna help you have a proper AI implemented in your service desk operations. So with this, I'm at the end of my presentation. So right now we would use this opportunity to ask any questions. So I would ask Mauricio to join me and we would begin the question and answer session. Yes, for sure. I have been answering uh, some questions uh, on the text side, but a quick question for you is that if these support Arabic language, so right now the artificial intelligence is designed over English and we do have plans to bring in multilingual support for AI. So right now it's only in English. Okay. And uh, one last question. Uh, can Sia give a video tutorial based on questions? So right now we have knowledge base suggestions that we have in the system. So if that knowledge base article has videos, that is how it is going to bring in. But again, to bring a video tutorials on how it's going to be done is exactly based on the data that is already there, which is the knowledge base information. Okay, perfect. Well, that's uh, that's it, Santosh. Uh, if uh, uh, there is uh, more questions, please uh, don't hesitate to to, to send us uh, uh, an email. Uh, a lot of people is asking about the recording. Of course, uh, you will receive the link later. And uh, I do not want to make this uh, recording longer. So thank you so much, everyone, for, for, for connecting, for being with us. And thank you, Santosh, for uh, having me. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Mauricio. And you all, all have a good day. Bye-bye.
Bye-bye.